welcome to Behind the News. I am your host Alima Sadia and I am joined in studio with two very, very um, seasoned political analysts, Mohammad Rizwan and Tahir Islam Gora. Mohammad Rizwan is a very uh, renowned political analyst while Tahir Aslam Gora is not only political analyst, journalist but also he is the candidate for PPC party. I welcome you both today. Thank you. Thank you for inviting us. So, we will start our debate today um, uh, with the different political parties and their policies. So, is there any difference between their policies really? or how they are taking their policies. So, I will start with you Rizwan, how would you like to comment on that? Yes, uh, Halima, as uh, we are approaching federal elections, we can see that uh, the main political parties, the two major players, liberals and uh, the conservatives, they are in a very, very interesting situation and that is uh, kind of unique to Canadian politics. We have not seen it for a long time uh, in the past. Uh, both are at 34 percent approval rating and uh, they are in kind of dead heat. Uh, this elections could have been a scoop, a godsend opportunity for uh, the conservative parties, uh, but uh, at the moment what we can see is their leadership lacks national stature and uh, they do not have that uh, penetrating kind of force which is very important to score a political kill uh, at a very right time and at a very uh, opportune uh, moment. They are not materializing, they are not uh, trying to cash in on uh, the opportunities which uh, basically the uh, uh, you know forced errors and the own goals which uh, uh, Prime Minister Trudeau is scoring for them, they are not cashing in on them, we, we do not see that happening. Uh, prime, uh, as far as uh, uh, liberals are concerned, uh, they are uh, seriously, they are in a danger of becoming Prime Minister Trudeau a one time wonder. Uh, that is what we call in political terms uh, that a person who rode his popularity and then he according to the people and constituents he failed to deliver according to their wishes. So, but it is a very interesting situation that uh, their main rivals and opponents, they are unable to score a political kill and Prime Minister Trudeau does not have the credibility which he used to have in 2015 elections. So, PPC is fairly new and it is uh, being, it is having a lot of allegations on that. Um, Green Party was also been taken and uh, we have seen NDP also. So, what is your comment Tahir regarding the policies, the difference or is there or there is not any? First, I will address the um, issue what you said allegations. I do not call allegations at all uh, on PPC. Actually, uh, PPC uh, is new party for sure, but the leader who is uh, leading a party is not new politician. He is a very seasoned politician, Maxime Bernier. He happened to be a uh, minister in previous conservative government and uh, the reason he uh, left conservative party and uh, formed his own party uh, because of uh, failure of uh, uh, conservative uh, values in the party. So, that is the biggest issue. So, our party uh, uh, the People's Party of Canada is absolutely People's Party. Uh, it really uh, reflection of aspirations of uh, Canadians. Uh, what Rizwan said, I agree with him on uh, many uh, aspects. Unfortunately, uh, I do not see any difference, practical like sort of a difference between both parties. They, they talk about uh, some, some petty issues for instance, uh, when I find Mr. Andrew Scheer criticizing liberals, they do not, uh, um, conservatives do not address real issues. They just want to do political scoring, but they do not want to uh, bring conservative values on, on table. 
So, this is very sad. I find this conservative leadership is bringing party towards left center kind of. I mean, we will talk about what is left and right in our uh, discussion, um, but I am very disappointed the way our political parties, particularly two very left lean parties, uh, NDP and Greens are heading towards without understanding ground realities and liberal and uh, conservatives, they are only focused on winning the election, not any principle, not their party uh, values. So, it is a very chaotic situation and uh, I absolutely claim that our party has solution for Canadians to come out of this chaotic situation. So, recently McLean's had a debate which is always there for leadership debate. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau did not participate and uh, Mr. Maxime Bernier was not invited. So, which kind of impact do you think it will create because it is considered one of the top most debates of Canada. Mohamed Rizwan, I will start with you. Uh, well, it will have a significant effect uh, on especially the new parties like uh, Maxime Bernier's uh, uh, People's Party uh, because uh, that is the stage where Maxime needs to tell Canadian what he stands for. He is relatively new in the, in the fray. As a politician, he is not new, but uh, as his party, what his party stands for, uh, that message uh, has not been sent across. And that is the platform where Maxime needs to send his message across uh, to all the Canadians across the board. That is uh, uh, what he stands for. Because there are certain reservations uh, on Maxime's uh, uh, political uh, uh, ideology and uh, people are still confused that is he right, is he far right or is he on fringes. Uh, so, that is very important questions and uh, that was uh, a platform which could have uh, answered those questions. Unfortunately, he was not invited due to, due to the rules of uh, Elections Canada, but he is coming as I hear that uh, he is coming in the two formal debates in which uh, uh, candidate Trudeau. Uh, he will be there and uh, Andrew Chair will be there as well. And so, that will be the platform where Maxime will have to score. So, Tahir, I will come to you that uh, he was not invited in McLean's debate and now he has been officially invited for very important debates. So, what is your take on that? You know, um, first I will like to uh, say a few words about uh, McLean's debate. I do not like to call it a debate. It was a chat. It was a chat between among actually three uh, party leaders, uh, two clearly very left lean, far left um, um, parties, uh, NDP and Green, and the other uh, leader, Conservative Party's leader, Mr. Scheer, who claims to be a, a right center uh, leader. He did not appear as right center, he appeared to me as kind of a uh, left center leader. So, I mean, this, it was kind of a chat. People can go uh, um, on YouTube and can watch this debate anytime, and probably they would agree with me that, I mean, all party leaders, at, I mean, not all party, three party leaders, in fact, they were agreeing on many issues. And I was shocked that how could three agree on, on core issues? And the so, thing is, so, how could we call it a debate? Debate is always to bring out the point and then to have your discussion and agreement is not necessary. You disagree also, but you give your perspective that how do you think differently about that, you know. Yeah, yeah so you are not only that because what I notice in that so called debate, what I notice there that Mr. Sheer was so defensive, he did not want to appear standing on his party principle. He just wanted to please the vote banks. He just wanted to attract voters from left leaned parties towards conservatives. What kind of this politics is? So 
I would say amateur kind of uh, immature. I would rather I would I would use. So how do you see Rizwan this point of what Tahir has raised? So do you think that that debate had that kind of impact on people? Yes, that debate. First of all, you take a sting out of that debate when the candidate, the leading candidate Trudeau, is not there. Then, then another candidate, which is uh, banging on the door of uh, this political uh, scenario, Maxime Bernier, he was not there. So the sting was already gone, and uh, you know half the juice of debate was uh, uh, basically gone. But then, uh, what was left with the uh, share to do over there then? Uh, he just tried to pander to the voters and uh, he just tried to score uh, points on his uh, far right, uh, uh, far left opponents. So that's uh, all he could do. That, that was not debate in a general sense of the word because all the candidates were not there. But let the time come and when those uh, times will come, then we will be able to assess. In the beginning, uh, uh, when you asked me about the overall situation, uh, I would like to point to a very uh, interesting uh, fact uh, that both the parties in public approval rating, uh, both uh, conservatives and uh, those uh, liberals, they are in dead heat. They are on 34 percent, 33 percent tying uh, with each other. So that makes about 68 percent of the total vote. So where is the 22 percent people would go? Uh, are they going to vote NDP? No, because Jagmeet Singh's popularity is going down. Because Jagmeet Singh's approval ratings have gone down from 15 to 11 percent. So where that floating vote is going to go? Are they going, going to vote Greens? I don't think so. Because uh, in Ontario, in uh, Quebec, Greens uh, have a, I mean, entirely different uh, uh, you know, face than they have in Alberta and uh, uh, Vancouver. So th that's the floating vote. That vote shows that they do not want to vote for Scheer because uh, he lacks uh, whatever they think uh, he lacks and uh, they do not approve uh, Prime Minister Trudeau's uh, 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 policies as well. So that's a big chunk, chunk of floating vote to capture and uh, that's out there to capture for anybody. That's why I said that this is going to be a very interesting election. That can be one possibility that that vote doesn't turn out. I mean, they are so alienated, they are don't, so, uh, you know, kind of, uh, uh, um, they don't like uh, whatever is happening. but. There is a possibility that they come out on the ballot day and speak with the ballot and that will be very important. <coughs> Always the difference is by the silent voters who you never know yeah. are going to they, go how. They were not used to be silent but this time they choose to be silent because they don't know that they don't know Sheer. Yeah. Because they they do not approve Trudeau, fine we can see that but they don't know Sheer as well. So where do they go? They are just keeping quiet. And those who are who are who are watching them, they are having the same like same kind of response. That if liberals have the same uh, kind of uh, response to the policies, certain policies, and uh, conservatives are going on the same line. So what is the difference? So I see a lot of confusion in vote bank and in the minds of people. In that wake, we see that. Uh, Jigmeet Singh is calling PPC, People's mm. Party, which is standing for certain very different ideas, very, very, I would say, pricking ideas right now. So how would you comment on that, that uh, Jigmeet Singh states that PPC is a racist party. He calls it a racist party. Tahir, what would be your response? This is his racist remark, quote unquote, I would say. Um, first of all, we all need to understand what is racism. It's not about ideas, it's about races. So if, if any race is behaving bigotry against other race based on some ideas, then we call it a racist. But when any political party like PPC tables that we would have better immigration policy and you come and attack us as racists, come on grow up. I would agree with uh, Mr. Tahir here uh, that uh, uh, Maxime, uh, as far as I know, as far as I 
uh, uh, understand whatever his party stands for from his uh, uh, manifesto and from his uh, website mission statements. Uh, he is calling for less immigration. He is not calling to stop immigration. So that needs to be clarified. But only Maxime can do it. I can't do it for him. Uh, you know, maybe no, no, Uttar uh, Sahib can do that. Yeah. And, and, and but uh, the thing is that he needs to put his message across. That's why when you raise the issue of debates, I told you that it's very important that he gets on the national stage and gets his message across. And uh, th that will be, you know, uh, his... Yeah, no, no, I, uh, I absolutely agree with Rizwan. But the thing is, uh, Maxime... Uh, we are confident would be given chance to speak in the in national debates. But apart from those debates, Maxime is saying this over and over through all mainstream media that we are not here to uh, completely uh, abolish the immigration. Yes. We will be having quality immigrants mm -hmm. rather than quantity immigrants. Mm -hmm. You know, so I mean, we are talking about having something like 100 to 150,000 immigrants every year yeah. because this is in the interest of immigrants. Now we see like people here in Canada, they come from all over the world. They are doctors, they are engineers, they are uh, qualified professors, journalists. Unfortunately, they are not getting jobs in their fields. That's the reason because we have too much uh, immigration. Uh, influx, misdirected, misdirected, and and uh, all previous governments have uh, wrongly advertised about Canada in terms of to immigrants. And he also states can Canada for Canadian first. That means he realizes that those who are living in Canada and are Canadians should be served first, should yeah. be having the opportunities first, which is not wrong at all. That, that thing is being misunderstood across the table. Uh, Canada first means that's it. Canada first. Yeah. Doesn't the, mean you, more. The country doesn't mean you, more than that. Which, which you What's belong wrong to. That? The no, no. But the thing is that, that Canada first, our uh, motto and our notion, unfortunately, appears sort of a racist, quote unquote, yes. for other parties. For so we live in a in an a, a era where political correctness is to the extent that we are not able to call a spade a spade, mm. one thing. And secondly, we have, we are not able to open new debates. That's our political scenario at the moment. PPC is opening debates. PPC is saying that we should stick with common sense. PPC is saying that we we should stir the debates. Yeah. So stirring the debate is kind of a sin in our political correctness environment of Canadian politics. So that's the dilemma, not just dilemma, it's a tragedy in fact. And we have economic problems too, like like around the world it is economic crisis. And with that crisis we have to see that how our home goes first, you know, than mm -hmm. anything else. So what what do you see in, in this terms, what do you see that how the political parties uh, are actually um, uh, taking point and taking, uh, 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 guiding or misleading the societies about um, uh, because of being a at the stake for vote bank than mm. uh, thinking about the social changes or bringing something better for the societies. What is your take on that Rizwan? Like uh, uh, Tahir said, this is, this is uh, we are unfortunately living uh, in times uh, where most of the things have gone blur, which used to be very clear uh, before. Uh, and uh, this is because uh, the, these populist right movements, they are not being understood correctly in, in the proper context, what they, what they are trying to say. Uh, people are, the people on the left are just uh, labeling and painting them with a wide, one wide broad stroke that uh, these guys are racist, these guys are anti-immigrants, these guys are this and these guys are that. And at the same time, those movements uh, which has come up, sprouted all over the world, we can see in Europe, in America and everywhere, those movements 
are not doing enough to get their message across. Uh, they are just, uh, I mean, they are perhaps happy as they are being painted, I don't know. But at the, uh, uh, all we can see is they are not trying a very pinpointed, very directed effort to reach across to the voters and tell them people and tell them that look, this is not what we stand for. We are not racist. We are not anti-immigrants. We are not this. We are not whatever th those people are saying. All we are saying is that the interests of this country should come first. I think people would understand it. People would understand it. Once you put your message across, they will understand it that, okay, what's the, uh, you know, what's wrong with that? It you should know, be massively communicated to the people. It should be communicated in a proper it. way. Yes. Uh, it should be very well directed and very well, because at the moment it looks like that they are happy with the, whatever the allegation they are, uh, they are being stuck on them. They are happy to have that. Uh, but they are not trying an extra effort to, uh, you know, clarify, to, to, to reach out to people and say that this is not what we do. Popularism, but, no, Tahir, no, how would you no, say no, that? No, no, Popularism is something else, but we are talking about populist political parties. Yeah. So, I mean, it's the same thing, what we are talking. Mm -hmm. What is one addressed, it's the same thing. So, people call, uh, uh, not people, political parties, mm -hmm. call our People's Party of Canada sometime populist party. Yeah. And we have no issue taking that. Yeah that uh, a sort of a credit in our because popul being populist is not something negative. Yeah. But you have to communicate uh, people. No, no, but, but the thing is our party leader says very clearly, yes, we are populist uh, political movement, but we are smart mm. populist political movement. And what Rizwan said, I would just like to clarify the thing. It's not that, that populist uh, uh, parties uh, are just taking that uh, uh, that label on them and not clarifying them, they are clarifying them. Uh, United States situation is in front of us. Uh, President Trump doesn't care about, you know, those so-called taboos in politics. He, he has broken all taboos because it's, it's time to call a spade a spade. I mean, what I believe that there should be a, there should be enough room for open debates in all walks of life, and that's what President Trump does. And now he is not just the leader of a populist movement of Republican Party. He he is a popular leader as well, mm. you know. So. Look at the situation in many European countries. And uh, there is a point in politics when someone feels that, why should I clarify about those things? Why do I need to clarify about that, that I am not a race? For instance, I come from South Asian background. I was born in a Muslim faith and I, am, I support PPC. So what does that m mean? Does it mean that I am a racist? I am Islamophobe. If that's the kind of al allegation for my own country, which is Canada, I am happy to take those labels, you know, because I am challenging extremist ideology. I am challenging that kind of a narrative racism. What does that narrative mean? Because I mean, now what we see today is a kind of a situation where white groups call other white groups racist groups. It's not just me and Rizwan and you, we call them racist. It's a kind of a political card. So when a very white guy from a rural uh, urban area call another white guy, rural urban area, a white guy and say, you are racist, I'm unbelievable. So this term, Islamophobe, are racist, these terminologies uh, have been invented, I would say, to shut the debates. So that's the kind of a scenario and uh, I think, I'm, I mean, I'll um, give an example of India. Prime Minister Narendra Modi also come from quote unquote right party. So I mean, uh, now the people of India, they understand his message and he got a great mandate. 
So, it is a time about not just right and left, it is time about rationality and irrationality. And we make common sense, People's Party of Canada makes common sense. We are rational party. In my humble opinion, all those old time right and left distinctions exist no longer. I thank you both for participating today with me in this debate. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you for inviting us. Thank you. Thank you very much for watching Behind the News with us today. I will bring you more news updates. Watch elections, give your opinion. With these words, thank you very much for watching our show today.